Good evening everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am UndeadSick83, your governor of movie reviews. And since it's Saturday, it's time to do another movie review. Yes, the first movie, re movie review of the year. Here it is. New content for you to enjoy. At least, I hope you enjoy. So, um, yes, uh, a new movie review, fresh. Um, I've just watched the film, so I'm ready to discuss uh, with you what I'm gonna, you know, the movie I'm going to talk about. Um, so without further ado, let's just dive right into it. But first of all, I would like to say cheers or uh, slanche to everyone. I'm having some beer to celebrate the end of my vacation. Uh, Monday, I have to get back to work, so, you know, but... This weekend, I had time to do another video for you guys. So, again, cheers or uh, slanche, and I hope you will enjoy this discussion and review. And uh, the movie I'm going to talk about today is a movie that I absolutely adore. Uh, this is a movie that I've seen probably 20 times already. And uh, I can't get enough of it because I just, I, I love this film. I'm just gonna uh, show you the title right away. Today we are going to talk about Umberto Lenzi's Syndicate Sadists. Yes, um, I am going to discuss and review my first uh, Policetti uh, film right here on the channel for you guys. I'm very excited about it. Um, I love this film. This is, of course, from uh, 88 Films. Uh, love this film. This is a film from uh, 1975. It's directed by the great Umberto Lenzi, of course. And uh, it's a great, great film. So, before I start diving into the film, let's just start with the basics. And uh, let's dive into the uh, synopsis of this movie. What is Syndicate Sadists about? So. All right. So, Syndicate, uh, Syndicate Sadists uh, tells the story of an ex-cop called Rambo um, who comes back to Milan uh, for the first time in months, uh, but he comes back to Milan to visit his best friend and his family. Um, and it seems to be a nice little vacation for him, but when a child of a uh, high elite doctor gets abducted by criminals, and when his best friend, who is also a cop, uh, when his best friend is beaten to death, by criminals, and uh, at the same time, criminals abduct this kid of this high elite doctor. Um, uh, Rambo goes on a quest to find uh, justice and revenge for his best friend, but also to get back this, uh, you know, kidnapped kid, and of course, do right by uh, his best friend's family. So that is the uh, the story of Syndicate Sadists. So before I start diving into what I love and some issues I have with the film, I want to give a little uh, I want to give a little bit of context here. That's what I always do. I'd like to give a little bit of background on these films. You know, I think that's fun. You know, to get some more information on films and stuff. So, um, so basically, this is what it boils down to. Um, when, when Umberto Lenzi was writing this film, uh, this, when he was writing the script for this film, uh, Thomas Millian, who is a great actor, who was a great actor, um, but when he was writing this script... Uh, Thomas Millian was actually on vacation in America. He was in New York. And when he traveled back to Rome, 
he found a book at the airport, um, and the book was basically First Blood, uh, written by David Morrell, uh, you know, the famous book that later went on to become, you know, First Blood, and then later on, the, the rest of the, uh, the Rambo films, of course, with Sylvester Stallone. But anyway, he saw this book at the airport, and he was really interested in the title, um, so he bought a copy of the book. And basically, on the flight from New York to Rome, he read the whole book. He went through the whole book, and he was immediately attracted by the name Rambo. And so, when he got back in Rome, and Umberto Lenzi hired him for this film, uh, Thomas Millian basically demanded that, I will say yes to this film, but only if my character is called Rambo. Um, so, Thomas Millian only wanted to do this movie if his character could be called Rambo. And, of course, you know, we all know the rest of it. That The rest is history, because Umberto Lenzi agreed. And so, that's how... Um, that's how the character, um, you know, came to be. That's the origins of the character of Rambo in this film for Syndicate Sadists. And uh, I thought that was a fun little tidbit to throw in there. Um, and uh, I, think it's, I think it's very funny, you know. Uh, first Blood wasn't the first Rambo film. No, it was Syndicate Sadists. <laughs> Even though it has nothing to do with... Uh, you know, Rambo and Sylvester Stallone and stuff, but the, Sylvester Stallone is not the first, uh, not the first character who, uh, the first actor who plays a character named Rambo. No, no, no. It was Thomas Millian in Syndicate Sadist. So I thought that would, I thought that would be fun. You know, a little bit of information on First Blood and uh, where the name Rambo comes from, from uh, Thomas Milianz's character. So, um, with that down, let's just dive into the film, right? Let's discuss what I loved and didn't love about this film. Here we go. Alright. So, the first thing I want to address is that I really appreciate... Oh, my mustache is a bit... Anyway... Um, the first thing that I really appreciate is that uh, this movie focuses a lot more on story um, and less on the action scenes. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. I mean, there are some great action set pieces in this film. I mean, there is a great gunfight between two rival gangs. Uh, there is this fun little chase scene between Rambo on his motorcycle and a car that he's chasing. Um, so there, there are some really great action set pieces in this film. Uh, but overall, it's much, it, it, it's much more about the drama uh, in this film. It's much more about the dramatic element. Um, especially the whole family dynamic in this film is great. The family dynamic is great between, you know, uh, his best friend and his wife and the son. You know, they are a very loving family. You know, they, they're, they love each other. They have fun. There is no inner turmoil there. Um, they are very sweet. Um, you know, Rambo is uh, is cracking up jokes with uh, with uh, the son of the family. Um, you know, uh, 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 after his best friend dies, um, you know, he of course tries to do right by his family, and he supports the wife and stuff. And the wife is again is a very kind-hearted person. A very sweet, loving character. Just the whole family dynamic of this film uh, really resonates with me. I think it's a really great element of of this film. Um, you know, you have this grieving widow. Um, 
and this kid who doesn't really understand why his father was killed, you know, if he was such a good policeman, then why was he killed? And then, of course, you have Rambo as the protective sort of hero. Um, I, that all worked very, very great. So that's a big positive for me. The, the fact that this movie um, focuses more on drama and emotion than it actually does on the action. Although there are some great action set pieces, but the focus is the emotion and the drama. So that's one thing I love about this film. <clears throat> All right. The second thing that I want to address is that I really love the music in this film. I love the music in this film. Um, it, it's not a secret. I love Italian and European soundtracks in general. I think they have some of the best soundtracks out there. Um, uh, th I, that's just how I feel. I think they have fantastic soundtracks, you know, whether it's Giallo or Westerns or, you know, Policetti films, they have great soundtracks, and this movie is no different, so I love the music in this film. Now, originally, originally, the score for this movie was going to be done by Ennio Morricone. Um... F the first person that Umberto Lenzi asked was Ennio Morricone because Ennio Morricone did, of course, well, Ennio Morricone did like hundreds of films, you know, westerns, giallos, whatever, uh, Policetti's. Um, he, uh, but uh, Umber uh, Umberto Lenzi asked Ennio Morricone to do the score uh, because he was so impressed with uh, Morricone's work when he was doing uh, the uh, the music for Almost Human, uh, another Policetti directed by Umberto Lenzi, with uh, uh, Thomas Millian in it, and Henry Silva, I believe. Um, so, originally, uh, Umberto Lenzi asked Ennio Morricone to, uh, to do the score, um, but uh, Ennio Morricone's wife... Uh, basically, basically, she wanted Ennio uh, to step away from uh, this film uh, because Almost Human was so gritty and violent um, that she didn't feel comfortable uh, with her husband doing the soundtrack for another one of those films again. So, basically, Ennio Morricone was asked by his wife to step away from this film because she didn't like um, Almost Human. And, and funny enough, Ennio Morricone uh, uh, agreed with his wife and he said no to the project. He said no to Syndicate Sadists. Um, he said, I can't do this movie I don't know if he told Lindsay about all of this stuff, but um, I, I'm sure they had some kind of conversations. But uh, Ennio Morricone said that I can't do this movie, so I have to step away. Um, and so Umberto Lindsay had to resort to other people. And he ultimately found Franco Michalizzi. And Franco Michalizzi ended up doing the, uh, the score for this film. And it's a great soundtrack. The music in this film is top notch. Um, Fran uh, Franco Michalizzi uh, creates, he creates a very, he creates a very jazzy sound, uh, which almost, it almost feels like it belongs in a nightclub. It almost feels like nightclub music. You know, you have this sort of like a trumpet and very upbeat 
theme, you know, when the uh, when the intro starts to play, of course, uh, there are some other themes about, of those as well. Um, but yeah, it, it has a very jazzy feel to it that you feel like it's music that belongs in like um, you know a nightclub or a strip club or whatever, and it's uh, and it but it but it really works. But it really works. It really, really works. So um, that's another thing that I really love about this film. Let me see. Where where was I? All right. So, all right. Um, the last positive that I want to talk about is that I I love how. Um, how do I put this? Uh, this movie uh, is more uplifting. This is a more uplifting uh, Polichetti than most of the uh, Polichetti films, which is something I really, really appreciate. I really appreciate that. Look, most Italian crime thrillers, and the, I, I love Italian crime thrillers. I, I adore Italian crime thrillers. But most of those Italian crime thrillers are a bit more uh, noir and gritty in their nature, um, and sometimes, uh, and sometimes those movies uh, have very bad endings. You know where uh, the villain basically ends up winning, or the main character dies, or whatever. Um, so those. Polichetti films are very, very different. Um, Syndicate Sadists, however, has a much more positive feel to it uh, than other Polichettis. You know, this is like, this is a very positive and, and almost sort of energetic Polichetti where, you know, it's, um, you have this, again, you have this protective good hero in Rambo, played by Thomas Millian. Um, and that's another thing. You know, Thomas Millian, he always plays characters that are like the villain or have a lot of gray areas to them. With Syndicate Sadists, he plays a very straight, uh, forward, uh, good guy. He, he is the hero of this film. Thomas Millian is... The hero of this film. There is nothing bad about him. Like, like I said, he is he is funny with the son of his friend. Uh, you know, he he has a strong bond with his friend, with his best friend. He is very um, caring towards uh, towards the wife Maria, who is of course at some point grieving her her husband. You know, he's cracking up jokes with uh, you know their son and stuff. It, the whole the whole flavor overall of syndicate sadists is a very positive and uplifting one and it's just this movie is all about finding justice it's all about finding justice and the movie and the movie has an hap, it, it has a happy ending the movie has a the movie has a happy ending which is something that rarely happens in Polichetti uh, films, in Italian crime thrillers. But Syndicate Sadist actually has a, good, has a good ending. It has a good ending, a positive ending, uh, which I think is really, really great. And I love this movie for that. It's... It's something completely different in the catalog of Polichetti's, you know, Italian crime thrillers. It's com something completely different, and I love it for that. I love it. So, now, with that, with that said, with that out of the way, is this a perfect movie? No, of course it's not. Of course it's not. I mean, every movie has flaws. Every movie has mistakes, and this movie is no different. This movie is no different. And yes, I have some issues with Syndicate Sadists. So 
Let's dive into those right now. All right, so let's dive into those right now. And I basically boiled my negatives down to two, all right? I have two. I have a small one and I have a big one, okay? So I'll start with the small one and I end with the big one, okay? So the small one, here it goes. My first negative, which is, again, a small thing, but, but I have to say, the dubbing of this film, the dubbing of the voices in this film, it's, it's always annoying. The dubbing in these films is always annoying, to me anyway. Um, now, that said, you know, I, I, lo I, I love it. I love Ital uh, not the dubbing, but I love Italian cinema and European cinema. So um, it doesn't really bother me that much the dubbing of the voices. I mean, because because I'm so passionate about European and Italian movies that it doesn't the dubbing doesn't really bother me that much, but. If you are new to these kind of, uh, you know, if you are new to these kind of films, if you are just starting to watch these movies, the dubbing might turn you off. I, I, I have to be honest here. That that I really feel like that's the case. If the if you are just getting started watching these movies then the dubbing might be a big problem for you. It might turn you off. I, I'm just trying to warn you. It, it might turn you off from the film. Uh, because it is, if you don't, um, if you aren't as involved in those movies like I am, then it can be a very frustrating thing to watch, uh, the dubbing. You know, the, the lips and the voice is always out of sync. You know, it's just, it's a thing. It's just a thing. You know, the, um, you know, they, they shot this, uh, they shot these movies without sound. Pretty much all of these movies were shot without sound. Um, so they, you know, they had to resort to dubbing, which is a very weird choice, but it's there. It doesn't bother me. But if you are just getting started with this sort of stuff and you don't, you're not very familiar with it, it might turn you off. That's all I'm saying. So that's the small negative. Now moving on to the big negative. And this actually feels like a problem for me, okay? This feels like a problem for me, all right? Here we go. So... <clears throat> um, my big negative for this movie, and this is my, this is my only big negative for this movie, okay? But my big issue with this film is that it feels like this movie left some very, very big scenes on the cutting room floor in editing. Um, especially the scenes with Rambo and the character of Paterno, who pl who is played brilliantly by Joseph Cotton, by the late Joseph Cotton, but especially the scenes between uh, Rambo, Thomas Millian, and Paterno, uh, played by Joseph Cotton. Um, so now, when I first saw this movie, I was asking at, at, when. At, and it ended, when I was watching this movie for the first time, and it ended, I was asking people, like, so, is, is Paterno really Rambo's father? That's, that's the big question that I was asking. That's the big question that I was asking to people. So, I, I mean, is it me, or is Paterno really Rambo's father? In this film um, and now after re-watching it several times like about 
20 times. Um, but after watching it several times, um, there are certain scenes in this film that allude to that revelation um, and that allude to the fact that they might actually be related in blood. Um, there are several scenes throughout the movie where you feel like there is more to these two guys than they are letting on. Um, so it is alluded to that whole thing in the movie. But we never actually get that revelation. It's never made clear or apparent that that is actually the case. We never get that revelation, that resolution. And that really frustrates me and irritates me. Because even though I don't have to know everything, I do want certain answers. And when you only have one big question that is asked in this film, I don't understand why you wouldn't just answer that. So, I don't know, maybe it was decided to keep it a mystery. Maybe it was decided to like, uh, this doesn't really work, we'll leave it on the cutting room floor. But it feels like a very weird decision to me to not have that sort of explanation to the audience. That you wouldn't give the audience that gratification, right? And that has always frustrated me about this film. You know, if I... Um, if I would have been on the film crew, if I would have been there filming the movie, I, I would have I would have said to uh, the creators and stuff, I, we have to make a scene. You know, it could be it could be at the end of the movie. Slight spoilers, but at the end of the movie, there is a conversation between Paterno, Joseph Cotton, and Thomas Millian, and basically Paterno is saying to um, uh, Rambo is you you killed my son and that's basically all that is said now what I would have done is this I would have I would have given a final twist to this film I would have done this if you have the scene with Paterno and Rambo I would have had the conversation like this Paterno would say to Rambo you killed my son, your brother. And then later on, there is even a line that delivers, uh, that Rambo delivers to Paterno about uh, something like, you know, despite, uh, despite of everything that happened, uh, you're still a man, or you are a man, or something like that. You're, you're still a man, you are a man, something like that. I would have changed that line too. I would have, I would have had Rambo say to Paterno, um, in spite of everything that happened, you are still my, or you're still my father, or you are still my father. That would have been enough. That would have been enough if you had, if you had given me those two lines, in the final scene, in in the like, in that scene with Paterno and Rambo. If you have given me those two lines, I would have been fine. I would have been fine. I wouldn't have been complaining at all. But the fact that they keep it such a mystery is just really grinding my gears. And uh, it's always been a frustration with this movie for me. That, like, if you allude to it, then at least explain it. So the audience can understand. But anyway, that's just me. That's just me. You might feel you might feel different. That's just me. You might have a different, you know, point of view. Um, but yeah, that is my big negative for this film. That is the one big issue that I have with it. So, all right. So um, I think I talked about pretty much everything I wanted to talk about uh, here. So, in closing, in closing, <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, so in closing, how do I feel about Umberto Lenzi's Syndicate Sadists from 1975? Um, this is a fantastic film. It's, it's a great film. It's one of my all-time favorite uh, Policetti's. Um, you know, I, I watched this movie over and over and over again. Um, I've watched it about 20 times. I can see myself watching this for 20 more times. Uh, I just, this movie is so great. I love this film. I love this film so much. It has great casting. You know, like I said, Thomas Millian, Joseph Cotton, Maria Fiore, Mario Pave, Piave, um, you know, Luciano uh, uh, Cat Cat Catenacci. Uh, there, there are so many great uh, actors in this. Um, you know, the way that uh, Umberto Lenzi directed this is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I haven't talked about cinematography, but cinematography is great. I just, I love this movie. Um, with, uh, you know, with the exception of that, with the exception of that one big issue that I have with it, and, you know, the small one that other people might have with it, um, I think this is a pretty damn good Policetti, and uh, it has a lot of things going for it that I absolutely adore, and um, I, I, will, I will love this movie uh, until the day I die, probably. No, but I really, I really, really adore this movie. And, uh, and if you are a fan of Policetti's or crime th or thrillers in general, you have to check this one out. Or at least buy it on Blu-ray. Because uh, this is worth having in your collection. So, yeah, Syndicate Sadists. Love it. Love it. So, in terms of my rating for this film, uh, let me think. I, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty easy one. Uh, you know, taking into account the issues I have with it, um, I'm going to give Umberto Lenzi's Syndicate Sadists. I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. I think it's a fantastic film. It's damn near perfect in my opinion, and uh, I. I, every time I watch this movie, I love it as much as the previous time. So, yeah, great film. Check it out. So, Umberto Lenzi's Syndicate Sadists, 9 out of 10. That is my rating for the film. But let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? Uh, have you seen Syndicate Sadists? Have you not seen it? If you did see it, did you love it as much as me? Or maybe you hated it? If you did hate it, tell me why. We can discuss and debate. Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree? Again, if you disagree, tell me why. We can discuss and debate. Do you have any movies or TV shows you want to recommend to me for me to watch and review? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know your thoughts, opinions, theories, ideas, as always. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video as soon as possible, of course. Stay safe and healthy as always. Have a good week and I see you guys. Bye.